بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ وتھ واٹ آر لٹریچر بائی ٹیری ایگلٹن اوکے سو نمبر آف اسٹوڈنٹس ہیو جوائنڈ اس ناؤ اینڈ آئی ایم شیور دیٹ دس ول ہیلپ یو الاٹ اور دس ٹاپک ول ہیلپ یو الاٹ اسپیشلی ان انڈرسٹینڈنگ لٹریچر And Terry Eagleton has defined the literature in the different ways. And uh, this topic uh, uh, comes under the uh, subject of literary criticism. So now let us see that what uh, are the views of uh, Terry Eagleton regarding literature. Terry Eagleton was a student, a student of uh, Raymond Williams, the famous theorist who, who published the book Keywords. Eagleton does not state arrive on his argument and state evidence to prove his statement. Okay, so uh, certainly in criticism what happens that uh, uh, some people uh, present their ideas, number one, and number two, uh, uh, then the others may come up with the uh, arguments in order to prove their own statements. Okay, our own point of view uh, in uh, means in literature. Same as the case over here. But as far as uh, Raymond Williams is concerned, then it has been mentioned that he is the uh, teacher of uh, Terry Eagleton. Okay. Instead, uh, he examine, examines all the ideas proposed about literature, all definition provided for the same. Then gradually unpacks them and finally points out his problems with them okay towards the end he arrives at at his own idea and tries to define what literature is it means that uh, certainly after going through uh, means uh, uh, different type of uh, books uh, then uh, any writer any writer come comes up with his own ideas And certainly he supports the same, especially in the light of arguments. Mr. Pinto suggested that students take this route of reasoning while writing their research papers so that they do not end up summarizing their own arguments in the first paragraph itself and would be exhausted. It means that over here, Mr. Pinto has suggested the students who are going to write research papers. I think that uh, research papers are uh, research thesis is no more uh, new for you. So I don't need to explain these things why yeah, because recently, uh, by recent, uh, I mean yesterday, you visited the university as uh, I was told by Komal uh, for uh, getting more and more Uh, guidance regarding your thesis uh, writing in order to be submitted with the passage of time okay or with the, uh, within the given period of time so here mr pinto suggests that students in the first paragraph should not uh, should not mention their own point of views okay their own point of views otherwise what will happen they will have to prove each and everything and uh, Or whatever knowledge you have uh, means gain uh, during uh, writing your thesis uh, certainly in the light of the same you can easily understand uh, writing introduction or paragraph number one of introduction in in research that uh, uh, what type of things are put forward over there okay so i don't uh, want to go into the details of the thesis and research papers and etc because you are well well versed with them this card is also emphasized on the importance of doubt in order to gain knowledge so if you want to gain knowledge this card uh, this card is certainly one of the greatest philosophers of his times so he is of the view that if you want to if you want to know something then you may start your question with doubt as you have recently done in a research uh, thesis okay and research questions might be there and your whole the thesis depends upon the search for 
answers of those research questions which you have raised in the beginning and up to the end uh, you will try your level best to, uh, to uh, get answers of those questions which were certainly not clear to you okay so i'm uh, so i am of the view that i should not uh, uh, discuss the research questions and etc but here the main point which is under discussion is uh, in the words of discards that uh, you should start your question with doubt uh, in order to gain more and more knowledge some of the immediate ideas that eagleton shows in are following so uh, the following are the ideas uh, which have been put forward by eagleton as far as the literature's definition is concerned he first examines if literature is imaginative fiction or just fact so the chief point over here is i uh, to understand is that either the literature is imaginative imaginative means uh, based on imagination fiction or uh, or uh, it is a fact so now see that again recently we have discussed the fact and fiction fact and fiction over here so that's why i don't uh, uh, mean to uh, think uh, to discuss fiction and fi uh, fact over here and uh, uh, both of the terms are very much killer to you literature can't be just one of these because it spans from newspapers to philosophical treatises treatises and treatises to novels and poems so uh, Uh, Eagleton is of the view that now literature is not no more uh, limited to particular things, but uh, it starts from the newspapers uh, to poetry and prose and other forms of literature, novels and etc. While newspapers may be purportedly uh, reporting facts and daily happening, one may wonder why so many newspapers exist. to do the same work okay so newspapers are there and and uh, they put forward different type of news uh, of daily life over here but over here the he raises the question that so, uh, uh, if news are same then why number of newspapers are over here to uh, to publish uh, the same news this is a question and this is a big question and all of you uh, should think about it that what uh, what is the difference for example uh, take don newspaper take delhi jung take delhi express and uh, pakistan times and others and others and others and others you will find the same news okay so here he raises the question that if news are same then why is, uh, so many newspapers exist over here uh, uh, means in our society though the question and its answer cannot be so simple so it means that this is not a simple question and answer of the same one can see that relationship of different newspaper is dictated by the interesting or informative or humorous nature of reporting what distinguishes them sorry what distinguishes each paper so now see that here he is going to discuss the way of presentation okay certain news papers sir uh, means uh, follow the one uh, uh, way and the rest of the newspapers uh, other are in other words we can say that uh, for example if all are the newspapers then the same newspapers certainly have different type of means of communication through writings so uh, they uh, the newspaper differ uh, newspapers differ on the basis of their interesting type of news informative type of news and humorous type of news also this definition of literature seems to be exclude text or what sorry that transcend pure writing like magna or comic books so same is the case with literature as uh, means uh, all of you know very well Uh, that uh, literature. What is the definition of literature? If you if you recall in your memories, 
definition of literature, you will find you will find that uh, literature is a mirror of life. If it is a mirror of life, uh, for example, then uh, why we have uh, newspapers, novels, and uh, uh, plays and poetry? Why? So the easy answer of all uh, uh, the question is this that because these are the different ways to promote literature or to project literature or to put forward literature okay these are the different ways are uh, these are the, these are different means these are different sources otherwise thing is same okay then he comes to the formalist argument about literature. So there's formalist argument. Mr. Pinto first briefly explained why fascination with formalism, that why we are fascinated, why we are attracted towards the formalism. It is so because formalism tries to break away from the existing norm and resorted to examining the medium itself. Okay, so in formal formalism, what happens that we are we are detached from the norms, uh, uh, the rules and regulations of life, and then uh, simply uh, we examine the medium. Medium means source. Source are presenting the same. Our source are presenting the thing. For example, language. Language plays vital role, especially in projecting any type of piece of literature. Either it may be novel, it may be play, it may be poetry, or it may be prose. For example, if, uh, uh, if you think about the language of poetry, then certainly you will find it entirely uh, flowery type of language, attractive language, a beautiful language. Otherwise, recall in your memory the tragedy of def uh, sorry definition of tragedy uh, put forward by uh, uh, Aristotle. Embellished language is used in tragedy. Embellished language means that the beautiful language that is always used in tragedy for what in order to leave good impression on the brains of audiences. Okay. The formalist definition, literature is organized violence committed on ordinary speech. So this is, he has put forward, Mr. Pinto has put forward the definition of language that literature is organized violence committed on ordinary speech. This definition focuses on how for text to be evaluated, uh, sorry, valued as literature. The importance is to write in a certain way and use a particular register. Now see, here the thing is that what is the language of literature? On what grounds we can say that this is a piece of literature, right? How on the basis of language, literature differs from newspaper. This can be marked as a linguistic term in literature. So now see that, <coughs> sorry, this is, on the basis of linguist, we can mark the literature. A register in linguistics simply means a variety of language used for a particular purpose or in a particular social setting. So he has further explained the register in linguistic. Okay. That language is used for a particular purpose. Or uh, keeping in view the social setting, looking at register as a formality scale and placing it in the context of literature's formalist definition, we can say that when one uh, uh, shifted to using very formal or printed word, language or formal archaic words that were not used in ordinary conversation, the writing, written, so could be qualified as literature. So over here, he has defined the literature, but in some uh, difficult words, right? So overall, hold the emphasis on the language. Otherwise, as the signifier does not refer to commonly uh, known signified. For example, 
thou unravished bride of coitness so this is the language of poetry okay or in other words poetic language has been used over here it is not necessary that the person is talking about the bride or it is not even necessary that the bride should exist so over here he has explained these words over here before us that if the word bride is used over here it does not necessary that uh, sorry it is not necessary that the person is talking about the bride or uh, it is not even necessary that the bride should exist okay why because in poetry we have uh, figures of speech that are used uh, sorry those are used especially in order to get uh, uh, attention of the readers and audiences on the one hand and to leave the good impression upon them and all these figures of speech are uh, certainly uh, very much important in poetry okay formalist formalists Uh, defy reference to such cause say mystical symbolism and draw attention to material uh, reality okay so so here what is the uh, uh, what does sorry sorry what do formalists do over here formalists certainly reject uh mystical symbolism and they may uh tend to you towards material reality mystical symbolism and material reality right formalists it means that are those type of are that group which may believe in the material reality material reality in the sense that whatever reality exists over here around us or in other words we can say that the reality that we may can easily see okay formalists say uh, say that literature means poetry was particularly talked about is not a vehicle for content or ideas because what is written okay because what is written could have been written by anybody else located in that same under those conditions it means that formalists uh, don't believe uh, means uh, in such type of language for poetry why because they are of the view that uh, this vehicle uh, vehicle means vehicle means 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 to put ideas forward for content uh, content or ideas because what is written could have been written by anybody else located in that uh, in that same under those condition it means that certainly it has been written by some person and the condition were certainly the different than that of us priti then asked if this is not contrad uh, contradictory to the formalist formalist argument of rejecting social background and its influence on the author's life and the work so here the no see here the thing is that uh, prithi has asked the question that either uh, uh, writer or the poet was certainly not influenced by the society in which he lived okay and all these things certainly influence the life of a writer mr pinto agreed that it was indeed one of the shortcomings of uh, theory but even so formalists paid more attention to the forms of writing like satire allegory and etc and explained that it is the nature of the form that makes the content what it becomes in the end so now see mr pinto certainly ag agreed with priti because this is a discussion this is a discussion um, and these uh, uh, words have been picked up from the discussion of these two uh, from the discussion of these two which have been mentioned over here 
here mr pento is of the view that formalists paid more attention to the forms forms means the thing whatever before us forms of writing like satire is there allegory is there and etc and explain that it is the nature of the form that makes the content what it becomes in the end it means that the content always based on the form talking about estrangement eagleton says that if content is removed out of the context and its own social reality like shakespeare uh, read in today's time it is estranged it means that over here eagleton has put forward his own point of view that we cannot exclude the content content from context context means the situation in which we are living so we we will have to look uh, the thing especially in the context uh, means uh, in the situation which is before us are in which we are living and its own social reality so it cannot be removed content cannot be removed like shakespeare read in the today's time it is strange it means that for example why shakespeare is being read today one cannot comprehend in it in context of social reality and its and it results in delayed gratification causing increase in interest for example he is of the view that now see the context of shakespeare was entirely different than that of today's reality and that social reality was different from today's social reality so that's why uh, one who is going to study him will uh, not uh, uh, means get happiness or he will no more be pleased in today's world by uh, going through the writings of uh, shakespeare that is something else that something else that there are certain type of things uh, which are universal for example in nature of man uh, is uh, nature of man for uh, for achieving uh, uh, power and wealth okay such type of craving is universal until today why because the thinking of man has not changed that is something else but as far as the content is concerned and the social reality is concerned then both of them are entirely uh, means a different type of things okay so uh, he is of the view that the people may not uh, be pleased uh, when they uh, go through uh, the plays and poetry of shakespeare thus what is strange might be sometimes qualified as literature but sometimes what happens that uh, those things uh, can be uh, literature as well but this does not hold ground because even when misread or misinterpreted out of context work does not cease to make sense completely because of the way people relate in their own ways to it irrespective of their social or chronological friends it means some, uh, sometimes what happens what happens that irrespective of their social differences people always look at the thing especially uh, from their own uh, point of view and they may try their level best to fix the same in their own context okay in their own situation so we can say that literature has no essence or inherent common qualities across all the texts that are included in literature but rather something to do with the way the reader relates to it max it literature no see now uh, there is a paradigm shift paradigm paradigm shift means that now we have two things number one is literature and number 2 is reader now it is up to reader that how reader is going to tag the literature in his own context okay irrespective of social uh, friends so, for example the society in which william shakespeare lived was entirely different than that of us 
but now see that we can uh, we can uh, take the literature we can interpret the literature being individuals we can interpret the same and we can mold it especially in our own context irrespective of social differences so we can say that literature has no essence or inherent common qualities it means that a literature uh, you may you may leave the literature or uh, you may not give a priority to literature but you may give priority to reader that how he is going to relate it to make it literature Mr. Pinto stated that literature received its non-pragmatic license and special aura only after romanticism. Non-pragmatic means uh, not real. For example, romanticism that all of you are uh, certainly well aware of uh, romanticism. Okay. Romanticism certainly uh, uh, provides you freedom, freedom to think, freedom to take the things, uh, and you may you may leave the pragmatic type of things. And uh, certainly, when you when you don't uh, take into consideration classical views of the people, then certainly you move forward to romanticism. But literature cannot rely. Sorry. But literature can not only be what people think it is because then everything will be literature. So here the thing is that literature is not uh, such type of thing that, for example, if an individual may put it aside and uh, may uh, prefer his own point of view, then then uh, there will be problems. So then literature is something that a particular group relates to for some reason and values it so literature is that when we when we relate the same with ourselves being a group of being a group and we may give it values what could be the possible reason reasons particularly usefulness is not the reason so what are the reasons in what cases we can uh, we can uh, value the literature so over here only the reasons are no, not uh, means uh, the ground that on the on this and this reason we are going to uh, prefer literature. Mill and Bentham would also be included in literature. The reasons change from time to time based on the values and concerns of that period. For example, Matthew Arnold emphasized on serious literature and Eliot did not regard Wordsworth as a worthy of reading and uh, brought in John Donne, who until then was never considered. So this is a difference of opinion. Matthew and not certainly uh, uh, preferred a serious type of literature. If you if you recall in your memories, uh, culture and anarchy. And his other writing, Sweetness uh, and Light, one of uh, the chapters of Culture and Anarchy. Then over there, he has seriously put forward his ideas through literature that people should not ignore the most important uh, aspects of life and that is religion and they must not be inclined towards the material development. Like right so uh, uh, so here yeah, he has taken a literature very much serious type of thing but <coughs> and on the other hand william wordsworth uh, you have gone through the literary uh, biography and william wordsworth uh, uh, means uh, lyrical ballads and etc but Eliot, in the eyes of Eliot, william wordsworth is not is not worthy of reading in the state of william wordsworth he has favored John Donne. And John Donne ecstasy, if you have gone through uh, it or not, I don't know. If John Donne, you know John Donne, uh, then um, uh, are his other type of uh, 
uh, poems. I think that is a famous book is uh, Songs of Experience and Songs of Songs of Innocence. If you have gone through the same, then certainly you might have certain type of uh, mystical ideas and uh, in the poems and etc. But uh, I think that uh, he is one of the uh, most important type of writer uh, of the Romantic age. Uh, and he has put forward such type of uh, forms of poetry that may certainly take you above uh, this world. In other words, we can say that mystical type of ideas you would find in them. Right? <coughs> Sorry. So now see, so we can safely conclude with the help of the last paragraph of this essay that the preferences of people who are in capacity to decide what constitute literature are shaped by larger structures and value systems. Those of the class and other categories. It means that it is up to the uh, group of people that uh, what type of importance they have and then they can easily uh, decide then what to do then. We can also replace the larger preferences which can be classified into categories as ideology. So we can easily classify the things over here. We can prefer the things over here. Now we will have to decide that either uh, which is literature and which is not literature. So uh, this is this is the very brief type of uh, uh, summary of uh, the first, first chapter of what is literature. Okay, and uh, this summary is uh, certainly uh, very useful for you and it will help you out in understanding about the literature through the uh, eyes of uh, Terry, Terry Eagleton. Okay, so now uh, uh, I know very well that we have already uh, discussed uh, Terry Eagleton uh, means before that, but I, I was of the view that uh, this will certainly help you out in understanding uh, his point of view. And now see that uh, here we have understood that uh, to which piece we can say literature and which we cannot say literature. And what are the criteria, criteria, or criteria to test the literature or to judge the literature? Uh, means over here uh, through the uh, philosophies of Derry Eagleton, which he has put forward, and over here uh, we have uh, certainly uh, a lot of uh, new body of knowledge to understand it. So if anyone of you uh, means wants to ask me questions, then please let me know. Otherwise, we will uh, continue the same tomorrow and uh, with some other uh, part of uh, Terry Eagleton's Terry Eagleton's no, philosophy. Okay, so there are three chapters in his book. And this is about the chapter number one, what is the literature? And then we have certain other chapters to discuss over here. So whatever I'm trying my level best uh, to, to simply, simply share such type of knowledge with you that at least you may have idea about it, an idea about the topic that, okay. And then, then uh, in the very much uh, a brief way, So now, if you have any question, please let me know. And today we have 22 students who are here in the class. Is there any question? No, sir. No, any question, sir. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to... No, sir. I'm going to forward you this uh, paper and you may go through the same, right? And in this way, you okay, will sir. have more and more uh, ideas regarding the same. Okay, sir. Okay, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.